the clock as any other ideas, they come. They come in a certain situation uh, that you kind of, uh, uh, you concentrate yourself, you align yourself with some kind uh, of a topic. And I was doing a, a commission for Weimar. I was invited by Weimar to, for the year 2000 to make a, to, to create a work. Decided to do a house for Walter Benjamin and uh, Walter Benjamin was moving all the time so he didn't need in this house too many things so I thought something that was really uh, about his thought he always said the past and the future don't exist it's always now and with the now we move so it's always now so there was time and there was the now and how can you show the now without with declaring the future and the past, but in a way make them, move them to another space. And the clock came to me. It's a clock, but it's also something else. It is uh, some, it's like something that gives you a relativity into time and to urgencies into, and it has this graphical, so sometimes when it's nine and a quarter, three and a quarter, it's a line. Sometimes it's a smile. <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, like eyes that are... So it gives you other kind of possibilities to think, uh, to think time yourself and an object that reminds you or not of something. So it, it keeps, I always say, if you manage to keep in a work the trigger alive, so it always triggers. I think you made it. So I think with the clock, with this double clock, that really informed me a lot about the urgency of, uh, of dealing with the today all the time. I don't try to remember because I don't. It's magical. I don't remember. I'm now working on my archives and I remember everything. So I sit with my assistant and we work, look at photos. And I, re I said, why do I remember all this detail? Well, the eight years in Vilnius, it's just like nothing, I don't remember, but my body remembers. So every time I go where I was born, uh, my body smiles without me understanding why it smiles. And then it stopped smiling, and then we come to another little street, and then I smile again. So memory is not only where we think it is. I decided to research my city of birth. And uh, it was very interesting to go through the research because in each project of art I research what I'm doing. And so now I'm researching from where I'm coming and understanding that this city had so many people going through it from different places, both ways, from south to north, from east to west. And my photos in Vilnius is with my father walking in the street. So I decided that, that actually Vilnius is responsible for who I am. So Vilnius is actually responsible for me making double clocks, for me making all the works the way I do, like the monument that disappears or other things, uh, because it's so nice to actually give a name to who, who actually makes it possible that you do what you do in life because uh, it's wider it's bigger and uh, Vilnius is now for me every time I go there I have the feeling it's a new country it's a young country people look like they want to reinvent it or invent it the energy is a little bit reminds me a little bit of Israel too so people it's new they want to do everything anew and uh, I like this energy and uh, so uh, they don't, re re they just do it, you know, they do a new place because maybe there is no old place or no access. Whatever it is, the energy is for a new place. Every time I have this, uh, the same energy of, uh, of renewal, of inventing, of uh, inaugurating, uh, of taking the responsibility of actually making something, uh, that will be for after, uh, for, you know, 
and it, but you still see some places that are in complete uh, denial, or uh, we call it ruins. Uh, but so there is these two words uh, that are kind of calling you. So the dualities, I do feel dualities uh, that uh, are there too. My father is from Ignalina, and um, my mother is from Alitus. And uh, my father was drafted to the Russian army, so he was in the Russian army dur during, the, and this is how he survived, it means he survived Hitler and Stalin and, and the rest. And my mother, it was the teacher, it was a famous story, the teacher that took the whole class and put it in a, in a train and pushed them into Russia, into the east. And so they survived in the forest for all this time. And when she came back and she found that her house uh, is occupied by other people. And so we lived in Vilnius, but she never took us there. And uh, when I was invited by the art school of uh, Vilnius to teach, I asked them not to pay me, but to find the address of where my mother was living. I wanted to see where she was playing as a child. So we went there and uh, we didn't find the number. We looked, it, it's called the Detour Street. It was, it has 30 numbers and 25 was not, was not there. And so I decided to photograph this space after 23. And I was photographing all the time. We were photographing again and again, an empty space with a well in it and some kind of uh, children's square. And only after the father of this young man that was helping me, Petras, said, no, no, 25 exists. So actually it was the house that we were photographing out of focus all the time, but they put the number 30 on it. So here comes a story of, uh, you know, a house that disappeared, but is there. So again, a, cer a certain duality in a reality that uh, gives you kind of a whole possible story. The history of the Jewish people in Lithuania is a complicated one, and uh, I wish Lithuania would face it and kind of uh, deal with it and get over with it and include it in the reality, because if not, it will always be kind of moving and and asking for attention. And I think for the young generation, every time I come, they want to interview me, they want to talk about it, they are interested because it's part of their uh, kind of tremble and life. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not easy to be a Jewish uh, person and live with all the history that they teach you in school. Every time when you go in a higher uh, class, they teach you more details about it. It's not fun. <laughs> to run around with it all the time. But uh, this is a part of you and you go around with it and uh, it continues today and it will continue uh, after because this is how the order of the world is. I just got the passport of the Lithuanian passport by the very, uh, by the ambassador here during COVID, they found me and, uh, and I thought it's not important what passport you have, but actually it did make a different kind of identity. And uh, so sometimes when I travel and I use it, it's, it, I look at it again and again, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and it brings me into another kind of an identity that before was not really there at all. Uh, some kind of, it was belonging to my parents more than me. And now it's like, it's widened. I have the feeling I'm wider, bigger. So for me, memory is like the embodiment of absent. It's just the opposite of what it is. It's empty. And this is an invitation for us, more or less, to invite whatever we want to invite. And it's always new and different from whatever it was. And uh, that's why it is so creative and so fulfilling to deal with it, because you have to create it every time. The change is, it is the most amazing thing. So when I was invited to do 
the monument against fascism together, together with my uh, partner at the time, I said, monuments, I hate monuments. I want them all to disappear. Uh, and so we created the monument against fascism that people were invited to sign their name against fascism. And the, the 12 meters uh, column was every time when it was filled up with signature was lowered into the ground into a shaft we created beforehand saying that the monument cannot fight against fascism. It's us that have to do it. I do think if you want to, make, to deal with violent subject, that I think we have to, the art is not to depict violence. This is the condition I think that you need. For me, it's important to do that. If you need to do it, you have the obligation of not depicting it because otherwise it's not art. The duality should be there because then you are not dictating. Dictating is dictatorship. And if you leave the space in between a place where we can decide what it is, and most of my work came out, come, come out like that. They come out with several objects and several things. So it's not the one monolithic thing. There's always a, a tension uh, that invites you to reflect your own personal kind of experience. I was invited by the city of Paris and the memorial for the Shoah here, how to show uh, 60 years for liberating Auschwitz. And uh, to, we interviewed 60 survivors. What I wanted to ask them was three questions. Is, what did you, your life before the war, during the war, and after the war? Means you survived, you have it all. And the interview I said to the four teams that interviewed them is you let them speak as long as they want to speak. And it was up to nine hours each, and there was no editing. And then I took only the silent part before they answer, and I made a video in a triptych of only the moment they are silent after the question is there. What they lived through is nothing to do with words. And they give us a service of words, but they are there in the moment where they, through the questions, are re- emerging what happened and what was there before, during and after. This work, I think it in, in a way surprised me too, but uh, you needed the courage to kind of cut away their words. Whenever I have an idea, and this idea persisting and wants to be realized, uh, I listen to the idea very well. So I learn listening. Like really, I ask the idea how to realize it. I cannot wake up in the morning and say, oh, I'll make a little drawing out of it. If it's not about drawing. If I would have done the clock in a drawing. So it's, it is the idea that dictates. So it's a relief. You have the idea, you say, I succumb to you, my idea. Well, how to do you? When I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a sculptor. So I started to work for with a sculptor and I went to art school and uh, it was clear for me that, uh, and then I discovered there's other ways to do sculptures. There's other ways to deal with it. So video photography uh, installations are a different way of doing sculptures. So it's not necessary to all the time do what we call sculpture. This is what's so interesting with my life as an artist. Uh, as, all, as all my works are in, in, in different places, in Switzerland and in Germany, in France, in Canada, in the United States. And uh, now I'll have also a project in Lithuania. And it will be the museum, the city museum of Vilnius, that is really for me a super treat. Uh, to be a part of it as it is a part of me. After researching the house where they're going to put the museum in, 
that was a botanical garden that I also like this story because the botanical garden is a place that is actually given the mandate to bring uh, the foreign uh, flowers, exotic ones, from, from into the local. And I like that. Uh, and I found there this little rose that looks so fragile. And actually, the rose itself is very fragile, but uh, you cannot actually take it because it has so hard thorns. And this rose, when it was brought to Lithuania, was given the Lithuanian name and became Lithuanian. So I created this double rose that, as if there is a petal that is combined, these two flowers, that is not really natural because it doesn't exist. But I like the unnatural. It's the unnatural, it's the magical, it is the, oh, in, if we check in the Bible, all the miracles, they are always exactly the opposite of nature. For me, it's like a miracle too. So it's like this double flower that has the need of having another flower that is almost, almost a copy, but it's similarities. And that another thing that make, that um, is the driver of all my works, it's kind of, it's like the magic of, uh, we are all different from each other. This is what we have in common. It's the differences. And I find it as the biggest lesson in my life uh, that uh, keeps me, let's say, even alive. I pretty much like to come to a place and again and again and again. And yeah, maybe Vilnius, I would like to come again to visit more and to see again and again. Maybe, maybe the memory will come and say hello. It's here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. But uh, it's, uh, you know, it's an excursion.